Hi there everybody, my name is Dr. Ollie Burton, I'm a junior doctor living and working in the northeast of England, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, basically a year on from the event, I'm going to be talking you through the three key methods that helped me pass my medical school finals. Now right from the offset I want to be extremely clear about the terms that I'm using, because unfortunately in this space I see a lot of people posting videos like how I came first at XYZ University, or how I scored top in medical school, when what you actually find when you look into things Things is that people are talking about coming in top place, which is absolutely a big achievement, but they're talking about one exam in maybe one year of medical school and not graduating perhaps summa cum laude top of the year when you finish medical school which I think is often the implication and I get it I understand why people do it it's marketing it's clickbait but just a reminder to all the medical students and people who want to go to medical school if you see titles like that and the person in question is selling something or at least trying to sell you something whether that is a question bank a study guide or a vision resource just your reminder to stay a savvy consumer and if people people make claims like that, ask them to clarify exactly what they mean. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So in my case, when it came to my final exams, I passed my written SBAs or my MCQs, I scored a merit for the OSCEs, the short station-based clinical examinations, and I scored a distinction in the OSLAs, which are the long cases, which for us at Warwick Medical School consisted of things like a history, an examination, a viva, counselling, and anything else this long station asked you to do. My transcript is right there on screen, I've got nothing to sell you, but like I say, I think it's really important that we be as transparent as possible when we're talking about things like exam success and how to perform well. So the following three methods I'm going to talk about are what worked for me. I'm not going to promise that they will work for you. All I can do is encourage you to try as many different study methods as possible, because finals is obviously the time when we really need to get it right. Don't just follow what everybody else is doing, it's what works for you. The first thing that everybody needs in my opinion is a question bank because it is a sad reality of medicine not just while you're at medical school but once you leave and you start studying for your collegiate exams like I'm doing myself now a large part of success in answering questions is simply grinding through hundreds and thousands of questions until you've seen every permutation of every possible question stem and you're starting to put things together and you can often guess the answer or come to a conclusion simply by pattern recognition. For example, I know it's a bit of a meme, but if you see a question stem about a businessman who has just come back from a trip to Southeast Asia and now he's got night sweats and fever, 99.9% .9 of the time that businessman has TB. Equally, if someone's been sleeping in a bedsit or a hotel and any reference of any kind is made to either an air conditioner or a bath or a shower that is not cleaned regularly, that patient has Legionnaire's disease. And of course, you do need to have a degree of deeper understanding about the conditions which comes from your textbooks to be able to second guess yourself in the 1% of cases where that's not the answer, or indeed to tackle second and third order questions which ask you to think a little bit further and order suitable investigations, for example. But the whole point of this exercise is that patterns reduce cognitive load because you don't have to think too deeply about the rest of the question, you're not tackling it from first principles if you don't need to. And because patterns are so good at reducing cognitive workload for the brain, this is one of the reasons why it's thought that our brains are actually evolved to spot patterns over time. Now the two that I used in my case were BMJ on exam and pass medicine, both of which to me are gold standard question banks. It doesn't matter which you use and there are lots on the market that you can choose from, but it is a resource that's worth investing in. And in my humble opinion, simply grinding out hundreds of past questions a day is one of the best ways to ensure success on your written exams. Now to enhance this technique, what I actually did was I like to write down the questions and a few key trigger phrases and words from the questions as I was doing them, which actually has led to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sides of A4, which are nothing but scribbles, but there's lots of little diagrams, useful memory aids that I came up with over time, which help reinforce those really key ideas. And if you're a more tactile person, I would really recommend this too. And I've kept all these for over a year now, just so I could show you guys in this video. <laughs> now, the second thing that I want to talk to you about is flashcards, because I don't know about you, but I find looking at a screen for very long periods of time quite mentally taxing and obviously fatiguing for the eyes. I much preferred to have a tangible resource that I could pick up and put down when I was done with it. And I actually think this really helps psychologically too, because it allows you to demarcate visually and physically 
how much work you've done and how much work you've got left to do. This is a little bit different than just grinding out questions forever that will never run out. If instead you decide, I'm gonna do one of my decks of flashcards today and that's a good revision goal, then this might work a little bit better than just doing questions ad infinitum. Now, as I'm sure many of you know, I use the Zero to Finals flashcards. For full disclosure, Tom, who's the creator of Zero to Finals, it's a fantastic resource, sent me a box for free to review. And if you've not seen it already, I'd recommend going and watching the video I made about those flashcards because I very genuinely did use them to get me through finals. And as you can see, I also made my own on top of that because those cards at that time didn't cover everything that I needed for my exams. So what I did in practice was I addended Tom's cards with the extra things that I felt I needed to know and as you can see, made my own slightly less impressive looking ones. And as I say, I really liked this approach because it allowed me to set out physically in front of me my workload for say, the next two or three hours. And it gave me a physical benchmark of what I could do or what I needed to do and really helped streamline and compartmentalize my workload. And I think when you're stressing around finals that you're not doing enough, the well-being that that gave me was really valuable. And the last element to my revision strategy was this, this revision scrapbook. And this was to try and condense the key learning points into big mind maps. And essentially it serves as a repository for the really key bits of information that I thought I needed to know. Is it as clean as something like Notion? No, of course it's not. But I'm actually of the opinion that the value in making revision resources is actually in the making and it's why I don't recommend most of the time using things like other people's Anki decks because for me the value is in actually making the notes as a vehicle for embedding knowledge. But this is a scrapbook in every sense of the word in that it's got stuff stuck into it, it's got diagrams, it's got scans, it's got photos of conditions, it's got ECGs, it's got forms and things stuck into the back that I might need to fill out in an OSCE. And this is basically what I made in the run up to revision and I think the strength again of an approach like this, I'm not saying it's right for everybody and it is an inefficient practice, I fully agree with that. Nothing is siloed, everything is immediately available at your fingertips and you can look at it and think this is something I made, this is something I worded and made as a resource in exactly the way that I need it and I can be proud of it. And I genuinely still go back to this, this is a resource that I've used since starting work as a junior doctor and this is very genuinely the approach approach that I'm using for my MRCS Part A, which I've got coming up in September of this year, the first of the surgery collegiate exams. And the last thing that I want to talk about is a key tip that I feel really strongly about when it comes to clinical exams like OSCEs and OSLERs or long cases, whatever you call them. The first thing to say is that there is no substitute for experience. This is basically where your time on the wards comes into practice. Your clinical skills, things like examinations and procedures, and your ability to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. And the only way to get good at this stuff is to practice. Maybe during your final year or in the several months running up to final exams, get a study group together and agree to meet once a week or so and everyone have a go at every clinical exam that you need to know. After a few weeks, you'll have it down and you just need to keep it up until you get through finals. And make sure that when you're practicing, you are getting constructive feedback. It's no good if everyone just says, you're doing a great job, you're doing fantastic. If you're forgetting things or if your technique for particular parts of an examination or a procedure is off, this is the time when you need to know that people are honestly going to tell you that you're wrong and how to fix it. And it was actually in my case in the few weeks running up to finals that I learned a lot of new techniques from my colleagues that I'd never seen before and really helped when it came to the real thing. And finally, when you're going on to the ward in your clinical years in general, but especially in the time coming up to exams, go in with one or two goals for the day and make sure that you do them. Make those goals clear to the consultants, the junior doctors, the PAs, the nurses, whoever on the ward and they will help you. If you want to do bloods, ABGs, cannulas, catheters, let the junior doctors know especially because we have to do this stuff anyway. We might as well have you there doing it to help us. And especially if you've got senior staff like registrars and consultants, ask them to observe you examining a patient if you've got time because you are not going to get anybody better to give you feedback. And clinics are a great chance to hear how consultants explain particular procedures like surgeries to patients and explain difficult and complicated concepts in a way that patients can understand because counselling, either for surgeries, for procedures, for drugs, 
that is a skill that you absolutely should have as a final year medical student because you will definitely need it as a junior doctor. So thank you very much for watching guys, I really appreciate it. It was a really fun video to make and think back on my own medical school finals and I hope you find it useful. Have you got any really key study resources or strategies that work well for you? Please comment them down in the comments section below because this is a real opportunity to be collaborative and to help each other out. Take care, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye for now.